So this week we are uh, breaking up a couple different things in Illustrator for my for my advanced people or for my people who have access to Illustrator, and we are uh, talking about some different tools that we maybe don't use that often. Uh, we previously talked about the paintbrush tool. Today I'm going to be talking about the line segment tool. All right. So um, if I go here and then here, I don't want to show you that yet. Let's hide our artboard. Um, what I just did was I held down the space bar to move the page, and then I did Control shift h because I wanted to hide my artboard, okay? Now, the line segment tool, you can see I've already been playing with it a little bit. The line segment tool is right here underneath the um, uh, curvature tool, right? And right above the paintbrush tool. Uh, if you do not have all of these options, by the way, if you go up to window and then go to toolbars, make sure you're on advanced, all right? So if you're not on the advanced toolbar, and that's going to give you a problem. So uh, I'm going to, so the part of this is just to play around with these. you got a couple different options, things that you can do, okay? So line segment tool is kind of cool. Uh, all you do is just click and drag out, and then when you let go, it makes a line segment. Now, my line segment that it just made has nothing on the outside, so you can't really see it, so it's kind of boring. So let me change that, and now as I draw, it will make line segments. And so I'm just click and drag and I make a line segment. From where I click, it starts. Where I let go, it stops, and that's it, okay? Um, but you can also do, and I don't know if you know this or not, but you can do this with your shapes also. Let's say you want a square that's a specific size. You can create that. Instead of click and drag out, just click and let go. So I'm on my line segment tool, click and let go, and now I get an option, I get a little dialog box. It'll tell me you know, how big do you want to make this, and then what is the angle that you want to do. So if I said I wanted to do 180 degrees, which is flat, um, and I wanted this to be 10 inches, I now know that this, and it didn't do the right color, that's okay, we'll change the color to black, not green. Okay, so this line right here is 10 inches wide, right? And I was able to make a line that is that exact size. And so that's, that can be a good option too, if you're wanting to make a line, the pen tool, I could do that, but you know, it, and it pops up here and shows you you know, what the distance is and all that, but if you want to put in an exact value, that can be a good way for you to do that, okay? Also, the pen tool, it's click, 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 and then you just, you have that line that keeps going, so there might be a situation where you want to use the line segment tool. Um, so, but if you click and hold, just like a lot of these that have the little, all of them that have the little white triangle underneath it, they have more options. So if I click and hold on the line segment tool, I get some other toys, all right? One of them is called the arc tool. Arc tool draws an arc. Okay, just like that. Um, but if you hold down shift on all of these, you will get, so shift gives you some different results. Like I've got this, and if I hold down shift, it does that because shift constrains your proportions. All right, and I also, same thing, if I do down, if I hold alt, that makes it where it draws the shape from the middle and not from where you, where you click. Like if I did a uh, better way of showing that is with a different shape. When I'm drawing with a circle, let me just put a, I'm going to put a dot here to be my kind of center here. All right, so if I just click and drag out, then it draws with me, right? But if I click and hold down Alt, it will draw from the center, all right? So from the center of where I click because I'm holding down Alt, all right? So that gives me a little bit different uh, uh, options there, all right? So that's the arc tool. Spiral tool just makes me think about cinnamon rolls, okay, or perhaps being some sort of airbender or a waterbender. Um, but same thing, I can hold down shift as I drag out and it gives me different results and I can hold down alt as I drag out and it also gives me some, some different kind of flexibility there, all right? And all of these that I'm creating have uh, lines. They have, they have anchor points, okay? If I go back to my white arrow, then I can go back in and manipulate just those one I can go in and manipulate the handles. So you can make those designs using these as starting points, right? And you can manipulate things using the direct select tool. Uh, let's see here. So moving on, um, one of my favorite, I don't, I haven't played a whole lot with the polar grid tool. There might be somebody watching this video who's like, that one's my favorite. I don't know. I don't use it. But the one that is my favorite is the rectangular grid tool, okay? Um, rectangular grid tool will get you out of some situations if you need, like especially if you're trying to make something that's like a, a grid. Um, you can see the thing that I had pulled up here earlier was um, we were doing something for open house and I was like, we need a sign-in sheet for open house and I just need 
you know, a grid that has this design, something that I could make just super quick and send out to people. And this is a very, very quick way to do something like this, all right? Um, this is the kind of stuff that you can make that, you know, I mean, it's, it's super simple, super basic, but you make something look professional, you can send it out, you know. So anyway, Control Shift H to hide my artboard. So the, the rectangular grid tool, and I've been playing with it, so it may have some different options, yeah. As you click and drag out, all right, and I can hold down Shift to constrain my proportions if I want to. Um, oh, cool, I can do Alt as well. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so that is how I can draw a grid. Cool, awesome. Um, I can go in with my uh, black arrow or my selection, my, my selection tool, double click, select a line and say, okay, I don't want that. I could do Alt drag with Shift and add lines if I want to. So you can manipulate the grid once you've made it, okay? This just makes a default all evenly spaced lines. Like I could have made this without doing it this way, but to make it where they're all evenly spaced and everything, it's just a whole lot easier to do it like this, right? Um, let's see, oh, the other thing I was gonna show you with this that I, that I like is, uh, so I'm just going to delete that. So just like I showed you earlier, if you are on the perspective grid tool, and you, not perspective grid tool, listen to me, this is the rectangular grid tool, don't get confused. On the rectangular grid tool, all right, if I click and drag out, just like the other ones, but if I click and let go, I get more options. So I just click, and this pops up with my, with my, with my grid box here. And I can say, I want my width to be 15, and my height to be 15, and I want my dividers to be, let's say 75, or 57, whatever, 75. And let's make my vertical divider 75. So this is how many columns there are one way or the other. All right, you can change it after you make it, but if you put in the correct values here, it, it can make it easier, all right? So 15 by 15, 75 by 75, which is gonna give me a nice square design like this, okay? And so now I could use this, right? Now that I have all this selected, uh, I can go and use my Shape Builder tool. This is just kind of a bonus thing you can do. Uh, let's make it red, all right? And so just like we did with uh, pixel art, I could use this, and I probably would make it a little bit bigger because this is gonna be, the bigger your design, the harder it's going to have to process everything. All right, because it's trying, when I click and you see that delay, it's kind of running a little bit longer to be able to process that. So let's leave it at 15 by 15 and let's drop this to 40 by 40 and see. What, yeah, I like that better. Okay, so Shape Builder tool. And so now you can see, hopefully, I don't have as much of a delay. Oh, <laughs> it is making the, the shape. It's just. I don't have the fill color set to red. I was like, good grief, that's a really bad delay. Yeah, that's much better, all right? And so if I had this one selected and the other one selected, um, it would take a lot longer for it to process all of this, all right? But that is, in theory, how you can make a... Uh, let's see, that lines up with that one. Okay, so you could do your... Uh, pixel art person, whatever, character uh, design using the grid, the not perspective grid tool, I keep doing that, using the rectangular grid tool and the shape builder tool if you wanted to, all right? And then when you get done with this, uh, if you just select all of it, and then I just clicked one because it's all grouped, and then you can drop your outline color, okay? And now, so my grid is still there. If I go into outline mode, you can see it. My grid is still there, right? And so I could bring it back if I wanted to. Uh, and I also could do um, Shape Builder tool, and I can, if you want to combine these. Am I on the right one there? Yes. Okay. So that would combine. So instead of doing where this is just a shape with color, that actually combines those shapes together. So just your perspective on how you want to do that. Okay. All right. So that's it on the uh, on the various things you can do with the line segment tool. There are certainly other things that you can do with it. Um, this is one of those tools that the more you know about it, like I don't use it all the time, but when I need it, it is very, very helpful. Okay, so um, line segment tool, just spend some time this week exploring that, creating some stuff, make a pixel art design. All right, and then we're also, so this is coupling with the uh, paintbrush tool that we were messing with earlier this week for this week's assignment.